Happy to welcome my very special guest this week to the Derek Diamond Experience podcast, the vocalist from Hardline Crush 40, Mr. Johnny Gioelli. Johnny, how are you? Woo! What's up, Derek? I'm great, brother. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And I've been really excited to to chat with you ever since we set this up because I growing up, I was a huge Sonic the Hedgehog fan. And we're going to get into the music um, of Sonic here in a second. But I, I did want to ask you uh, from the beginning, um, what was it that made you want to get into the music business? So I have a, an older brother, uh, Joey, and you know, he's uh, five and a half, six years older than me. And you always want to do what your older brother is doing. So that was the first mark when I saw him playing with his high school band. I'm like, whoa, that is so cool. And uh, so that was the first inspirational point. And then the rest was just seeing, um, you know, MTV come to life and, uh, and you know, that whole experience of, of creating. It's weird, man. For me, I was, um, I started writing songs at like eight, literally eight years old, picking up a guitar and just writing and goofing around and stuff like that. And it just uh, was just something that I knew had to be my life from that point, bro, literally from eight years old. I knew, like when my friends were playing with Tonka toys and stuff, I'm like dragging around a guitar like like Linus with his blanket. That was me. It was me. Uh, that That's a fantastic visual. Like that should be a, I might Photoshop the blanket out of Linus's hand Dude, and, put, so uh, <laughs> and put the guitar in it. That'd be, Derek, that'd be great. Like, my, we, we were very, very poor, and my dad bought me like a $20 junker um, acoustic guitar. And, you know, the old Brian Adams, Brian Adams song, play that till my fingers bled, summer of 69. My fingers would bleed, and I'd have to wait for them to heal and callous, and I would just keep going and going and going. So that's, that's, that was the humble beginnings, and that's when I knew. But um, watching my, my brother's um, band high school band play and the crowd reaction. I'm like, I want people to cheer for me too. It's kind of started like that. And then I got into more of the loving songs and really like dissecting like at a young age songs, verses and choruses and hook lines. Like, wow, man, you can say something like you could have a, a real message and say something that you believe in. And that's, that's how it, that, how it all started for me. Literally. Literally. Oh, and another reason why I'm loving having you on the show is because for the most part, I talk about, you know, like movies and TV shows and things like that. And yeah. a lot of them evoke strong emotional responses, but the same goes with music. Yeah. You know, like the common thing is music is a universal language. Yes. Because you don't have to necessarily understand the physical language, but right. to, to hear the emotion in the words and in the beat of the song yeah. can just take you to another world it can make you forget about the problems you're having yep so that that's, that's right. it's what just, i love about music it's an, it's an emotion you know for, for me it um it's i always say it's a marriage between um for those who are married to understand this, it's a marriage between lyrics and music that combination that happens can be magical or can be disastrous and uh we hope for the the first part of course so yeah it, it's a marriage between words lyrics and music and that combination can affect your life. You know, specifically like, like the, the sonic music and all the, the Crush 40 music, I mean, you know as well as I know growing up with this music and having it be a part of our, our life, it was like, um, for me as well as the fans, it was like a safe place. You know, it was good message, good memories, stuff that we have to, that we still cherish today, you know, 25 years later. And um, so it's just so great to be able to have written songs that have impact on people. And I have Derek people come up to me saying, man, your music saved my life. It's pulled me out of the darkness. It's done this. That has always been my musical mantra. I've always wanted to make a difference in um, music to help people. Not to, if you, if you look at my entire discography, you're not going to find anything where I'm talking about like oh i hate you ah. I, I just it's not me so i'm i'm more of bringing optimism and positivity and uplifting you know type messages to the music so 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what I like about, you know, because I, I got introduced to Crush 41st, and then I went back and listened to a lot of the, the hardline stuff. And yes, yeah, some of yeah. it has a heavy beat to it. Yeah. But the, the message and the lyrics, like, you don't think of, like, heavy metal. Like, no, yeah, right. the beat's heavy, but the lyrics are inspirational and motivational. Yeah, it's feel And that's good. what I really like. like and and yeah. it adds to the powerful beat. Thank you. I agree, and I agree 100%, and it's just feel, it's feel good. You know what I mean? We always say, people always say, hey, can you describe your music? And I'm like, oh, man, I, I don't know how to do that. Uh, heavy Bon Jovi, uplifting, positive, feel good. I don't know. I don't know. And you see, the thing is about with, with songwriting, Derek, is you have to write not for what people you think people want to hear. That's the wrong way to write for any, anyone who's trying to write songs. You do not write uh, to sound like someone. You write what is inside here. And, and it has to start there in the hopes that it translates to other people. If it doesn't, hey, you know, it doesn't. But that's the art of writing. I've just been very lucky that I've been, that what I've written has connected with, with people and it, and it has worked the, uh, the correct way. But um, not every song I've ever written has been something where I say, oh, wow, that's perfect. But, um, but it's me. It's my creation. It's that taking that palette, you know, it's taking that blank canvas and putting the paint on it. And sometimes you look at some of these weird paintings, and you go, what the heck? doesn't look like it. It looks like my kid could do that, right? Mm -hmm. But there's, there's art in there, and that's what this is all about. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the same thing goes with, with movies and TV. Like whenever you write a script, you have to yeah. feel the story and the emotion because if you don't, the audience, you know, or in this case, you know, your, your audience when you're performing on stage, yeah. they're not going to feel it. Yeah, no, it's over. Right. Before yeah. it began, it's over. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, take me through uh, the stages of how hardline formed because i believe you guys released your first album in 1992 yeah. so how how did hardline come about so my parents got married and had me do i have to go back that far <laughs> okay, no, we won't maybe, back. maybe not quite that far okay okay um so hardline was formed around 89 90 um when we met uh, neil sean from the rock group journey uh who was actually married to my sister and we never looked to Neil for you know any musical help, but we would always be together during the holidays. We were all you know a family, and my brother and I were working on an album that we were going to call Brothers. It was going to be like a real you know heavy. It was going to be Hardline, um, but just him and I. We were kind of done with bands, right? And Neil comes running into the kitchen because we, we had our acoustics out and we were playing. He's like, "Man, let me see the guitar. Let's check this out. Let's check this out." And his chord knowledge, I mean, he's a brilliant musician. And we said, Neil, would you be interested in producing this record or just writing and working on tunes? He goes, well, I'm obviously busy at the time working on bad English music, but um, let's work together after the studio. So progressing along, Derek, um, he fell in love with the music. We, uh, we all did collectively. We were very, very close. And we decided to build just a powerhouse band uh, around this around this music hardline was born he said i've got the best drummer in the world dean castronovo dean castronovo said i know the greatest bass player todd jensen it was my brother on guitar myself on vocals neil on guitar boom and it and it was born and we we were right on the cusp of we did very well i'm, I'm not denying that we did very very well but we could have done a whole lot better if the whole grunge thing didn't happen the whole seattle sound the pearl jam stuff which is all cool i love it. it's all art the whole nirvana thing Soundgarden stuff which again i love that stuff but it really kind of took that type of music 80s 90s sound just went away but we did very well it definitely you know helped project my career and um it's still hardline still tours today i mean we still make records still tour today i don't know how many albums I have to count the wall but there's a lot well, and that I think stays true to, you know, your persistence in having a passion for what you want to do, you know, to, to take a band that you know, has was formed in the late nineties. And now here we are in 2023 yeah. and it's still going. Yeah. That's, that's pretty impressive, man. Yeah, bro. I mean, it's, it's, it was my baby, you know, it's like my, my little, it's like a, another child. And so, 
as long as there's an audience and there's as long as there's people that respect and love the music, I'll keep making it, you know? And I always say this vocally as well. When I can't sing anymore, because there comes a time, bro, where we just can't do what we used to do in in our twenties, okay? And again, I was in my in my mid twenties. And when that time comes, that's when you have to recognize and say, okay, I've done enough, and it's been a great career with that, and, and, and move on. So as long as the audience is there, I'm there. Well, and the great thing, too, about having, you know, like Apple Music, Spotify, oh. is that you can still gain new fans. Like, look at me. I didn't start listening to Hardline until, you know, a few weeks ago. But I was introduced to you through Crush 40, Wow, but that's boy. the great thing about modern technology. It really is, you know, and, and that has been, again, so fortunate for so many um, artists when you have a cross-pollination of bands. It used to be a bad thing when you were in too many bands. You'd be like, oh, he's a band jumper. He does this, he does that. But this is art, and I love working with as many people. I do a lot of outside projects. I love working with different artists and, um, and, and participating in different, uh, with different bands. And, uh, yeah... Social media, these platforms have created the cross-pollination of songs because every, the information's right there. Hey, there's Johnny. Oh, wow, he's got this band, Enemy Eyes. Derek, have you listened to Enemy Eyes yet? I have not. It's on my list, though. Okay, put that on your list. That is heavy, but that is really, really cool. It is so unique and so different and so heavy. You'll be like, wait, that's Johnny? Yeah, I wanted to do something. I wanted to fulfill and check that box of doing something different, and uh, the album's called History's Hand. The video on YouTube is, uh, like, my, my face is in completely silver. I, you don't even, yeah, it is completely bizarre and different than anything I've ever done. When we're finished with the podcast, you're going to have to check it out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and that that's the great thing about, you know, all these different art forms is there's so many layers. Like, there's not just one type of rock music there's your alternative there's yep. like you said grunge there's more of the heavy side yeah there's so many layers to what you can do and if you have the opportunity and you have the desire then why not try something different why not? what's the worst that could happen it's art i mean as long as it's real you know what i mean if it's if you're trying to emulate something or sound like something that's not art it just has to come from within so it was something I wanted to try, something I wanted to do, and I think the result is really great. You're going to have to let me know. Send me an email. Let me know if you like it. It's heavy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, will do. Okay, man. Absolutely. So let's talk about the Crush 40 uh, yes. era of your career. So how does Crush 40 form, and then how does that transition to you becoming involved with the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise? So... Uh, June Sonoy, as we all know, is the, my partner composer for the Crush 40 band and, um, and Sonic stuff, um, was a fan of Hardline. He learned about me through Hardline and reached out to me through uh, the guitar player of Whitesnake, if anyone knows the band Whitesnake, um, David Coverdale. And he asked me if I'd be interested in singing on tracks for an arcade game that Sega was putting out, a racing game, NASCAR. And I go, what's that? Like, a, he goes, yeah, you know, you sit and you steer and you drive and, you know, an arcade game. I'm like, yeah, that's, that sounds interesting. So we met in L.A. and we recorded what was soon to be Thrill of the Feel band before it was Crush 40. And all those NASCAR songs that did, in fact, a bunch of them end up in that that uh, racing game. So, to me, it was just a, a gig, and I enjoyed June, and we became friends. And then he contacts me again and said, listen, there's a Sega project. And I said, what's a Sega? And uh, he said, well, it's a game company, and we, we have these, these games. And um, would you be interested in writing some songs with me for, for games? I said, well, explain that. What, what, is that. what does that mean? You mean like a soundtrack for a movie? He goes, yeah, kind of like a soundtrack to a movie. We have a scene and like an idea, a theme, and we write the song that fits it. And I said, I love that because I was really starting to get into soundtrack music. And um, so I said, yes. And we started. Now, at that point, Derek, I had no idea what the what the franchise was about. I had no idea about gaming. The last game I played, I think, was Pong. 
Then I'm an old guy. Boing, doing, doing. Or Frogger, maybe. But that was it, man. That was my not my base knowledge right there. I had no when he started talking about this system and that system, and then I remember when Sega got rid of hardware and they were going to be software only. I remember all that. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? For me, it was about writing music and making it work for a particular scene. So I had no idea the magnitude of the franchise as far as popularity and the number of gamers and how big it was, just to put it simply. I had no idea, man. I was tasked to do a job. I didn't, I never, I used to have my daughter uh, read the copy, the evil Eggman does this. I'm like, what's an, what's an Eggman? You know what I mean? Like, who's a shadow, what? Sonic, he spins, what? Um, I had no idea, and I don't to this day. I have a general idea, but I've never played the game other than All-Stars Racing, because my son, when he was little, loved that game. Other than that game, I've never played Adventure, Adventure 2, uh, the Black Knight, Color, whatever I've been in. Never. And here's why. Because I didn't want to be partial in writing the creativity to any one character. I don't really want to know their full emotion. I don't really want to know, you know, what their intent is. I want to look at a scene and a storyboard and write music for that scene. So I go back, Derek, to June and I go, listen, like a soundtrack to a movie, we need to form a band Let's be a band. This is exactly what happened. I remember the call. It was in California. We need to form a band. And fans could buy the game. Because, again, I don't understand the franchise. Buy the game because they love the soundtrack. Or they can buy the game because they want to play the game. You know? He goes, oh, it's a good idea. He goes, well, what kind of name? I said, I don't know. Like, I was in my 30s. And I'm like, I don't ever want to turn 40. So let's just, like, crush 40. He goes, I love it. Bro, that was it. That was it. Crush 40. And now we're working on crushing 60. But Crush 40 was born, and then everything we did thereafter became a Crush 40 experience. And then we just kept, okay, there's another game. It's another game. And when I wrote Live and Learn, I handed it to him, and I go, I don't know. Is it good? Literally, I didn't know. I'm just like, this is what I think is right and he goes, that's great. It's awesome. I'm like, okay. And then I went on. Derek, still not understanding the impact. Yeah, and I, I think what's – I love that you compared the uh, the writing process to almost like storyboarding a movie. Yeah. Because – It is. When um, – going back to like the early Sonic games from the early 90s and even yes. video game music in general, it was just these little, you know – techie sounds there were no like lyrics or anything right so i I'm still good. remember to this day seeing the trailer for sonic adventure and hearing the open your heart song right and i'm like wow this this feels like a movie yeah that just so you, you just so happen to be able to play and it's so great that you know you guys have become so synonymous with those games because i think a, a big reason why those games are so good is because of the music. Thank you. Know, you. Music and, is like in a movie. Thanks, Derek. And you, you can, know, there's there's oh, no overthought to it. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, I didn't fatigue over like, oh, it's this word and that and this and that. It just all came very naturally because I didn't quite understand it, to be honest with you. I just said, I think this works. So I didn't overthink things. I just wrote it. It's so funny. We were listening to... My wife and I today were listening to Live and Learn um, because of the Prague Symphony in, in Prague for the 30th anniversary. And I listened to the song, and my wife was sitting at this desk back here, and I said, wow, I wrote a good song. That's a good song. And she goes, I'm very proud of you. You did write a good song. And it's taken all these years to, to realize that really worked. That's, that was really, really, that really worked. Now, I still hear things I would have changed, like little pitchy things, but that's the musician. They'd be like, oh, I wish I would have held that a little longer, but that's just the, 
it's never perfect for a musician, but um, I'm very proud of all of the stuff, but I'm mostly proud when someone comes up to me and says, this has impacted my life. I feel safe. You saved me. You were my escape. You were, you were the light in my darkness. You were this, you were that. And for a musician, it's not about the money. It's not. It's not about the fame. It's about that. I have more pictures of my phone, people saying you saved me, than, 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 than anything. That, that, is, that is the ultimate reward. The ultimate reward. Because that means your, your music, it worked. It fulfilled its purpose. And that is what the purpose should be. And that's really got to be a, a gratifying feeling, you know, when you set out years ago to, you know, make music. And now all these years later, you have people telling you, like, your music was an escape for me. You know, that, that just has to be such a, like, thinking that, you know, all the hardships were, yeah. were worth it. Derek, I'll tell you a real quick story. I'll try to keep it quick. Uh, going along the lines of not understanding, I was doing an event, and I was getting into a van, a pickup from the airport. I was going to this event. And um, I introduced myself to everyone that was in the, in the van. I'm like, hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Johnny from Crush 40. And everyone started laughing. And I said, what's up? What do you, excuse me? And they're like, we know who you are. You were an integral part of all of our childhood. And I'm like, what? They're like, dude, don't you understand? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no, we all grew up with you. Every note, every word in this van, we all grew up with you. And it was at that moment I ran to my hotel room and I called my wife and I said, I missed this. I, I, I missed it. And I was very upset. I said, there's so much more I could have done to make people happy in this time period because that's my thing. And I think I missed it because I didn't realize how impactful it really was until that van ride. I'm like, really? Because I just, you know, just every, every um, new game was like a new project. And I just had to be, work on the project. But didn't care, or didn't, I didn't, shouldn't say I didn't care. I didn't understand the emotion that swirled around it all. So it was just a great awakening. And since then, I've been completely changed on my outlook on everything, on everything. And I, I can't go back, but I know I can go forward on it. And um, I'm doing the Sonic Expo in Dallas um, this weekend. And I was asked, hey, will you spend some time with fans before the show and after the show? I said, I'll spend as much time as the fans want me to spend. I'll camp out whatever it takes to make people enjoy and relive and you know childhood or even today um i'm there for the people and that is me and i to go back to you saying you had this awakening of you know realizing that you made this impact on people's lives yeah you may have now realized it you know a little more recently or not early into your career but you did have that awakening you know a lot of people don't they yeah, don't have it at right. all you're right. But I, I think, you know, you could still recognize in the past what you've done, because I'm part of that that group, too. Thank you know, you. I grew up an only child and Sonic was a huge form of entertainment for me. Yeah. You know, and I still listen to those songs to this day. I have Open Your Heart, Live and Learn and several others um, like on a workout playlist. Yeah. So like I listen to them all the time still. I had to have it now branded. My live and learn is now permanently branded on my arm. I had that designed by a, a fan, which is also great. Charlie in Mexico, he's a brilliant artist, and he designed that for me. And uh, on it went. Yeah. So it, Is that the song that you think you're, you're most recognized for as far as, like, if fans come up to you and say, you know, I loved this song or that song? Like, is, is that the most recognized one? By far, yes. Absolutely, 100%. And then it's I Am, I'm All of Me, it's Open Your Heart, which I didn't write Open Your Heart, I just sang it. Uh, and then it's What I'm Made Of. And yeah, and then it goes, I can't believe how many, how many songs. I, I, I really, I can't believe the span of, of time. And 
I remember writing, we were, we were actually on a camping trip, my family, and June contacted me and said, we're in a rush, we have to write this song for blah, 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 blah. And I remember saying, family, go to the park, whatever, I'm going to sit here in the camper, we had this big tour bus thing, and I'm going to write a song right here. And I did. And I've written, um, let's see what other, I can't remember which song I was working on at that time, but I also remember a lot of hotel writing. Um, da, da, da. Anyway. So, yeah, it, it's, it's sometimes June would email last minute. We have to have something scratched by tomorrow. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, sometimes that's, that's just how the entertainment business works. I mean, it's the same with, you know, movies or TV. It's like, hey, we've got to have this done yeah. ASAP. Gotta so Got to be done. Yeah. I don't like rush, rushing creativity, but I never mind starting. You know what I mean? It's like maybe something doesn't come out immediately, but I got to start. So yeah. that's, and it's, we've been so lucky. There's only, be, our writing process has been so cool and we've stuck to it for 25 years. June sends me pieces of music and I'm either inspired or I say no. And he's perfectly good with that. And I'll say, June, I hear something here. Check this out. Like, da, 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 da. Or mm, June, I, uh, I don't hear anything. I'm sorry, man. It's just not. And away it goes. And we have a lot of away it goes, but I shouldn't say that. Let me take that back. We don't have that many away it goes, but um, um, but he's okay with it. When I say I don't hear it, move on, and then we just we just go. I remember writing what I made of. He goes, I just want to do something heavier. I said, okay, what you got? And he sent me that piece of music, wrote it. He goes, I love it, ah! and that's it. We just click. We just can write. Thank God. Well, and that's great that you have somebody that can. You know, I, I won't say take criticism, but if you if you're not feeling it, they're just like, okay, well then we'll just move on. Like it's yeah, it's great to have a a creative partner like totally. that, and you can't find too many of them. And I think that in the 25 years, being one million percent transparent and honest, uh, Sega has changed. Maybe had me change like one line that might not have been, um, I wouldn't say appropriate, but didn't quite fit what they're, they were trying to achieve, literally. And otherwise everything's been accepted and as June and I wrote it with no changes. So, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, it's really I cool. feel like that's a rare thing in the creative well, world of, too. It was a lot of trust, you know, especially when you have a successful song, you let the artist, you know, do, do their thing. Where's my dog and my puppy? So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a great intent. There's the dog. It's been a, an amazing uh, career. It really has. It's been the most amazing experience. Absolutely. Um, as we start to wrap up here, you mentioned the, the Sonic Expo yes. in Dallas this weekend, which I hate that I don't live in Texas because I would love to go. But Derek, they make airplanes. They're pretty good. They, they, they do. You're all right. Yeah. Uh, this is really cool because it's, you know, there are so many conventions now, not just in the yeah. U.S., but around the world. But this one is dedicated like to the Sonic franchise. You'll be there. Several of the voice actors will be there. Yes. A lot of content creators will be there. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, just um, you know, tell everybody about it and uh, what all they can expect. Well, obviously there's going to be a, a crush show. Um, more karaoke style. I have some guests. <coughs> Excuse me. I have some guests that will be appearing. We're going to have fun. This, this event to me is what I would consider a fan event, right? This is put on by fans for us to all be, f have fun and be, for lack of a better word, stupid together. Just have, you know what I mean? Just escape and have fun. It's not going to be one of these perfect, you know, everything has to be perfect. We're going to have a weekend together of fun, of music, memory, you know, rehash, feeling safe, you know, stuff like that. Being, being ourselves. Now I get it, bro. I didn't get it before. I didn't get it. One more quick story. Quick one. I did Santiago, Chile. And I did one of these, there was 20,000 people there. And a kid in a meet and greet came running up to me, literally, I shouldn't say a kid, it was a, an adult, young adult, crying on my shoulder. 
And I said, why are you crying? He said, because I was bullied. I was pestered. I was called a nerd. I was called stupid. I was called weird. I was called every name under the sun. Now, look at us. Look at us now. And I went, bro, you are so right. That was so wrong of everyone to do to you know, treat you like that. Look at us now. Look what gaming has become. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So this is a celebration this weekend of music and being together with people who understand what it's all about. Yeah, and uh, thank you for sharing that story, uh, first of all. But yeah, that, that really is what it's about, is spreading joy and, like you said, reliving fun times, yes. memories, making new ones, making new friends. That, that's what these gatherings are, are all about to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bro, thank you for having me. I really appreciate this time. I really yeah, do. absolutely. Um, can you throw out your uh, social media website so the listeners can follow you? So I am horrible at that stuff, but if you just Google me, everything comes up. You just Google Johnny Gioelli. I know it's at Johnny Gioelli. All my pages are at Johnny Gioelli, and everything comes up. Instagram and the Facebooks and all that, all that, the, the Twitter, the X, all that stuff. I'm horrible with that stuff. I write songs and sing. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. This was an honor. Thank you, bro. I'm nothing without you. So thank you. I really think about that. Who am I if I don't have you guys? So I am thrilled to be here with the Derek Diamond Experience. 